Hey everyone, Daniel Rubino here, Windows Central, and this is your Microsoft and Windows News Roundup for the week of April 8th, 2022. Let's get to it. All right, first up, happy birthday, Windows 3.1. Yes, on April 6th, 1992, Microsoft introduced an update to its popular 3.0 operating system with 3.1. And this was a major milestone as it was one of the first versions of Windows to be shipped on brand new PCs. You see, up until that point, you used to buy the PC and then you would go and buy the operating system because there were quite a few at the time. Well, this all changed with 3.1 as makers started putting 3.1 preloaded and that was a game changer for for Microsoft as it meant more people were buying Windows PCs. It also introduced two of the biggest time wasters in the world, aka Minesweeper and Solitaire, two games which I still don't know how to play. Yeah, I just admitted that on the internet. I've never actually really tried to play them. They just weren't my cup of tea. We all know 3D Pinball, which came later, was the real time waster. Other features included true type fonts, which it was also a big deal, and the introduction of Control C and Control V, two features that uh, you live and die by if you use Windows every day. Anyways, happy birthday, Windows 3.1. Let me know in comments, what was the first version of Windows you used? All right, next up is Journal, a Microsoft Garage project, which is getting a new name. It's now just known as Microsoft Journal, which of course makes more sense, but it's also because the app has now graduated from a side project slash research app to a full-fledged app. Microsoft learned a lot, it says, from how people were using it, including the fact that people imported PDFs a lot into the app itself. And the app has a really nice looking Windows 11 design. It also has AI to power it for help in selection and usage of the app. And overall, it seems to be quite popular. In fact, Microsoft will be pinning it to the pen menu in future versions of Windows, specifically Windows 11 22H2. In fact, if you get the new Windows 11 dev or beta builds, you will see it there. Anyways, it looks like a really nice app and we like to continue to see Microsoft focusing on pen and inking in its devices. You can, of course, just go download it from the store if you want it today on any device that supports pen and inking. All right, next up, did you know Microsoft actually held an event this week? It was called Windows Powers, the Future of Hybrid Work. And it was an opportunity for Microsoft to highlight what it was working on Windows 11 for business and enterprises. So there wasn't a lot of consumer stuff here, although there are some interesting bits. One of those will be Tabs and File Explorer, which I know what you're saying. We saw that earlier a few weeks ago. In fact, we have a full video showing how it all works. While that is true, Microsoft actually never announced or even acknowledged that feature at the time, but instead they announced it here. So that means it's official, it is coming, we just don't have an ETA on it. Other features were shown off were contextual suggestions, which is kind of neat. It's basically AI weaved throughout the operating system that will give you tips and ideas based on what you're doing. And another feature was video calls and specifically how to make them better. In Windows 11, Microsoft is building in the ability to auto blur your background using a combo of software and hardware, as well as use active noise suppression using AI. And one of the coolest features ever is the ability to auto adjust your eyes. So instead of when I'm looking at the screen and I'm not making eye contact. I need to look at the camera. In the future, it's going to auto adjust your eyes. So it, well, doesn't have to do that. If you think that's weird, well, Apple does some of this on its devices already. And in fact, a Surface Pro X already does this too. Now you do need an NPU to take advantage of this, but don't worry if you don't, as a lot of OEMs are already kind of building this out. In fact, the new Lenovo, Dell, and HP laptops all have solutions doing this kind of stuff, which is kind of nice. And it does make your life much easier. Now, if you need more information about this event, including the complete recap, our own Zach Bowden has an article up on Windows Central. We'll have the link below. Go check it out for all the announcements. All right. What if I told you you can have a full Windows 11 desktop PC for just $230? Technically, it's true. Yes, the new Dot One is a mini PC that is now available. It starts at $230 and from a company that has arguably the worst name I've ever heard of. In fact, I won't even try and pronounce it, but still, let's focus on the device. So it's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C Windows on ARM processor. So yeah, performance won't be the best, but you can get up to eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, which is kind of nice. Other cool features features it has is two full HDMI ports, three USB ports, a full Ethernet port, micro SD, and it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but there's also an option for 4G LTE. That maxed out version is still just $309, which is not too bad, as it gives a lot of flexibility for those who need to test Windows on ARM apps 
during development. It's also just a fun thing to have if you need a tiny PC with not the world's best performance, but just for doing the basics in Windows 11. Now I should point out while it does ship with Windows 11, it's an unlicensed copy, which means you gotta either bring your own key or you gotta buy one through Microsoft or the company itself, which is usually an extra hundred bucks or so. So just keep that in mind. All right, in our final story, Microsoft Edge. According to StatCounter, it is now the number two desktop browser in the world. I said desktop, not mobile, of course. Now, it just beat out Apple Safari, which had been running neck and neck with for the last few months, so this isn't too surprising. Although perhaps the bigger story is Google Chrome, which now sits, sits at 67.29% of the market share. And it actually went up around 3%. So it looks like a lot of people are giving up Safari and going to Chrome and not necessarily Edge. In fact, Edge's performance in this market is basically flat with just slight upticks every quarter. So while it's growing, it's growing very slowly. Now you may be wondering why that is. Well, it's kind of simple. People like what they know and know what they like. If you use Google Chrome, well, it's gonna be very hard to get people to switch over to Edge, no matter how much better it may be. The fact is people will just get locked into their browsers because that's where all their passwords and browsing history is. Even though you can transfer those things over, people still like the look and feel of a browser and find it disorientating when they switch to a new one. Not to mention a lot of people have both Chrome on their phones and their desktop browser, which means they get that syncing ability. And that means you gotta convince people to give up two browsers. And so this is a very difficult task for Microsoft, despite having the advantage of shipping Edge in Windows 10 and Windows 11 as a default browser. So let me know in comments what your favorite browser is. Have you switched to Edge? If not, why not? And what about your friends and family? All right, so that is it for this episode of our Microsoft and Windows recap. Let me know what your favorite story was in comments. Don't forget to follow me at Twitter, Daniel underscore Rubino. And you can, of course, join us every Friday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time for our podcast with Zach Bowden and myself, where we go over the news into more depth and also take your questions at the end of the podcast. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Take care, everyone.